All right. Welcome back. We're about to talk about one of the films that's opening Sundance tonight. It's called Blind Spotting. We are so happy to welcome to V Diggs, Rafael Cassell, and Janina. Uh, it's a lot. Bunker. Wait. It's a lot. Gavankar. <laughs> yeah, hey, ten days. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I, my, I'm successful for the day now. Though <laughs> my, the pressure is off. Yeah. Um, it's your first film here at Sundance, and you're kicking off the festival. Just what's your reaction to that? It's amazing. Yeah, it's really exciting. I don't, you know, this has been a, a passion project of ours. We, we, Raf and I started talking about this with with our producers, Jess and Keith, almost a decade ago. Yeah. So um, it's been a long time coming. It's pretty crazy that it actually exists at all, and the fact that people are going to see it who aren't us tonight is nice. <laughs> <laughs> or your family. Most of my family, my dad's seeing it tonight for the first time. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Hold on. You guys almost didn't show me this film yeah, until no. a week ago. We tried not to. Yeah, we yeah. yeah. Very... it's actually very, it's been very <laughs> under wraps. So, so tonight will be quite the premiere. People are super excited about it. Tell us a little bit about, tell the audience a little bit about what the film's about, because it was a, a collaboration, not always easy. Yeah, the film is, uh, it takes place over four days in Oakland, California, following um, the friendship of Colin that Debbie plays and Miles that I play. Um, as they're sort of uh, barreling through the last four days of Colin's probation and an event sort of starts to drive a wedge between their friendship and so it's sort of following them along in their sort of conversation with each other as, uh, as they sort out this, this pivotal moment in their lives. Is it fair, because it has been described as a buddy comedy, is it fair to call it that? Because it sure reads like it'd be much more than that. Yeah, we keep referring to it as a, as a buddy comedy in a world that won't let it be one. And so it certainly starts as one. <laughs> uh, and then, I mean, we'll let people see it and, and, and see where they think it goes from there. <laughs> but it, it, it certainly begins that way. <laughs> and so there's impression, there are impressions as well of Oakland. You both grew up in and around Oakland. Was it difficult to mesh the vision that you have of what you wanted to present of Oakland? Because your experiences obviously were different. I mean, that was the big challenge. It's why we made the film. And it was the sort of the big challenge of the whole thing. But we had an incredible crew um, with a lot of local people who really got it who really understood. So even though we didn't really know how to make a movie, we worked with a lot of people who did. <laughs> and uh, and they, they nailed it. I, that is the thing I'm most proud of about the film, is the, the Oakland that I see in the film is the Oakland that I grew up in, which is pretty phenomenal. I didn't know if it would translate, and I think it did. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a we were trying to create this very specific time capsule of the Oakland that we grew up in because it's going through sort of rapid gentrification, yeah. and there's an influx of a lot of new people. And I think both for for ourselves, we wanted to capture this this time period in Oakland that we know is like vastly changing and disappearing, so that people who grew up there can always look back and go, "This is this is the Oakland I grew up in. This is me. This is who I am." And also, people who are coming in can see how locals view the city, sure. and maybe find another another version of that story that may be uh, getting getting missed or replaced. And I think another really beautiful thing to happen is with all the other performers who maybe aren't from Oakland. Not every actor in the film is from Oakland. Um, <laughs> they, you know, really like the watching. Janina in the film, it's like, oh, she's from the town. Like, I, I, you know, everybody really took the script to heart and did all the necessary research. And it feels super grounded um, in a way that is, is very special to me. And Janina, where in the process did you come along and why did you decide to join them? Everything had, I mean, they they wrote it, as you know, they, it, over a decade has been put yeah. into to making this thing before I even showed up to read for it. Um, and I had a, a meeting with Carlos, our director, and our producer, Jess and Keith, and um, had some very serious conversations about what this film is actually about. Even though it is funny, there are some very, very deep themes here. And um, we were all very much on the same page, so when I showed up, I was like, let's get to work <laughs> a little bit, yeah. So either you bought into the, the, oh, the presentation. Very and easy. Very authentic. Very to you. easy to do so when you meet this group of creators. Yeah, yeah. And then when you were doing this, you brought in a first-time director, Carlos Lopez Estrada. Um, <laughs> does that uh, make you anxious? Were you worried? Is somebody brand new with your vision that you've been working on for a decade? Mm, we've been working, been working with Carlos with him. for yeah. so know, he was half a decade. So we, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. So he, uh, it was actually I think good for us because we have a, a, a shorthand with him, sure. um, and there were a lot of things changing on the fly, and things had to move very very quickly. 
um, and so it, it, uh, it and he's he's great at, at just making things happen. We have worked with him on a lot of projects that were had to happen too quick yeah. and under budget. So we knew he could do it. So we knew those two. <laughs> she was in on that. You know, yeah. We had this, you know, we had this dream of uh, the Bay Area. Sort of when, when you're when you leave the Bay Area for a little bit, it is this very your memory of it is this very heightened, very uh, eccentric version of itself. And I think. What Carlos has been really fantastic at with all the projects that we worked with him is taking an idea that we had and really making it sort of ex explode from the, the, the initial idea. And, uh, and so we wanted this heightened version of Oakland in the way that people think, not even necessarily the way that it always is, but the way that you think about it and remember it. And, uh, and we've just seen him do it a ton of times before on smaller projects, and, and we were so excited with the idea that he would get the chance to do that in a full length feature. And, and watching it back now, he just. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> awesome. So let's take a little bit, a little side view here, because um, people will know it. Because David won a Tony for Hamilton. That happened. And <laughs> uh, roles in Hamilton. And um, how did that affect actually bringing blind spotting to be not just an idea, but a project? Uh, well, it's interesting. I think. <laughs> We had been the, the group of people trying to make blind spotting had been trying to make blind spotting for right. a long time. Hamilton was actually a diversion. It, you know, we had, we hadn't gotten it together yet, and this play came along. So I said, Just well, play. whatever, I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> and um, but you know, the the big change for me after Hamilton is that people care what I have to say. So it was, I imagine it was sort of easier. I remember one thing that did happen was there were. Um, I think it made it a little easier for us to get some of the permits we needed to <laughs> drop my name. Um, Oakland, California was like, oh, David's involved. Yeah. <laughs> Come in, bring your friends. We can clear that. So, the, you know, that, that helped. But I think realistically, this everyone behind this project was behind it well before Hamilton was even thought of, you know. Um, yeah. What has changed since then is, is the kind of attention that, that we are capable of drawing to it, and maybe it helped us be opening night here, and you know, maybe. they got a lot more eyes on it than probably could have before. A lot of the media, a lot of the press focuses on that and says all of a sudden, you know, you get the overnight sensation even though you've been working on it for 10 years with this film, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, I think also nobody's seen it. So I, I imagine once people see the project, they will have a different, a, a, a number of different talking points about yeah. it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the movie, I know it raised a lot of questions. We're talking about race, socioeconomic, um, political. Are there answers? Is the film going to give us some answers or ideas or just raising questions? Uh, I think the film at, at its best is, is always just hoping to raise questions. Mm. I, I, I try to steer away, I think with any of the art that I create or that we create, try to provide any answers, but just, you know, perspective and just giving, giving a, a, a personal story about a universal uh, series of issues and just seeing what people walk away with. And, and so not and necessarily see, yeah. trying to leave people with an idea, just kind of presenting your idea. I think you get to watch how a few specific people deal with with things that are um, that a lot of us are dealing with. You can take from that what you will. I, th I think all of us sort of pick and choose. That's what we do, right? We go through life. We see somebody accomplish something. We're like, that's great. I'm going to use that sure. in my life. You know. Yeah. So maybe you find that for you from one of these characters, or maybe you totally disagree with their point of view on it. But I think. Um, the story is from the perspective of the, the humans in it, so it's not, you know, it's not a morality play. Starts a conversation, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know that music, spoken word, very big for both of you. What kind of role does that play in the film? Um, there, I mean, there is, there's a. So the Bay Area is known, uh, especially among sort of like the street culture, to have this very heightened vernacular, right? So everyone, it's very popular to have like a stylized way of speaking. The spoken word youth movement sort of blossomed out of there, the most contemporary version that came out of there. Um, and a lot of the rap m music that we listen to today is really heavily influenced by the slang that came out of the Bay Area. Um, and so when, when one of our first uh, sort of um, core elements of this story that we wanted to, to have was um, Having the having the characters in the story be driven by heightened language, mm -hmm. and so that's been one of the sort of the constants that stayed in every draft of the script over the years is is these moments where the characters slip in and out of verse and, and sometimes in incredibly subtle ways and sometimes slightly more heightened ways. Um, so it's definitely not a musical by any means, but it certainly has the same heightened moments uh, that a musical can have. Just really to to find a way to tell a, a, a lot of details about a story in a very short period of time. 
what's it going to be like watching this film tonight, your 10-year project, um, with a bunch of strangers? Granted, film lovers mm -hmm. were ready to love it. Uh, is that nerve-wracking? Is that exciting? Absolutely. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, I've been, I've been dying really to show this <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> and your dad? My, yeah, my dad's going to see it. Yeah. I'm very excited for him to see it. Yeah. He's, he's yeah, all it of the pa none of the parents have <laughs> seen it, right? Are everybody's parents here? Parents, 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 here? parents are all from, from the Bay Area here over the two last two days. Two days, champions. Uh, to see it. So very nice. It's going to be amazing. Very um, nice. Because they've, they've been a part of this journey with us. They've, they've been around since the beginning of us trying to you know write the script and get it off the ground. So. Everyone's just very excited, and we're we're just in, we're just in celebration mode, really. Yeah. yeah. So here it is. So do you sit back and you watch and experience what's happening, or do you think ahead? What's next? Mm. Uh, both at the same time. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I think there's a there's a great team of people around this project who are who are very forward focused. I think, which allows me to just live in the moment a little bit, which I feel very fortunate to have that opportunity. Yeah. Is there another project in the back of your minds that's next? There are 30 other there projects. Yes, yeah. yeah. all times. This is the beauty of the, of the last <laughs> few years of things starting to pick up is that we have we're, we're we're having more and more opportunities to just to just say ideas that we've been sitting with for a long time or things that we've had on paper. And I think this is this brilliant. This is such a great sort of first film for us to do because of our collaboration with, with Jess and Keith and how much they believed in the way in which we and by extension they think about art and the amazing cast that has sort of come around to make this film possible. I think if, if, that, is a st if that is our starting point for making more right. projects like this, we're in such a great place. Yeah. <laughs> so starting this film, because it was your first one, what did you find most surprising about the filmmaking process? What did I find what most surprising? Yeah, yeah. What didn't you expect? Uh, I don't know. Well, color timing, honestly. That was <laughs> it. That's it for me. I had no idea, A, how important that is, B, how brilliant the artists working on that are, and mm. C, how fiercely boring it is to me. <laughs> like I, I am, do not belong in that room. It's not going to be your second career. It's not, fifth. but it is incredible watching people work on that. I mean, like, the stuff that they're doing, it just, like, totally changes a movie from, from flat to three dimensions. I mean, it does, it does amazing things, mm. and I'm not the one to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> how about you two? Same thing. What was surprising? What was amazing? Mm, I mean, well, listen, watching you two trust your team was really impressive because, like you've said, there is a really great team that has made this with you, but that does not mean that it's easy for writers and creators to sit back and allow them to do their work and trust them. So it was a very relaxed set. It was a short amount of time. How long was it? 22 days. 22, 22 days. days. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know. and. Part of the the way that you pull that off is just by by having built a team around you and, and trusting them. Yeah, I mean, we got but the that's best. not easy. We got the best people. So. Yeah, yeah. We got the best people. Because <laughs> twenty two days. I mean, some films take months and years to put together to be able to hit the chemistry and to be able to get everything right. That can't have been easy. We had this we had this really fortunate opportunity where um, so so much of the cast and so much of the crew. Uh, had w one, a lot of the crew worked together before, which was really fantastic, and a lot of people sort of advocated for the project to bring in more people that, that they had worked with before that knew they could get the job done in, in the amount of time. So it's this really amazing collaborative energy on set. And then a lot of the cast are people that we reached out to personally that we mm. knew. Um, and that created this, I think it, it sort of started from David and I's friendship that had been sort of building for the dynamic of, of this performance on screen and we tried to just like carry that out with, with the dynamics with all the other actors and bring that energy to set and I think the combination of the kinds of people that we were, we were able to get and the combination of like local friends and local performers and local crew and the folks we, we, we brought in um, from elsewhere just created this this really beautiful dynamic that I, if I were to answer that question about what, what I was surprised of, like I just yeah. didn't think, I've been on set for a lot of other things before, I just didn't think that healthy and, and supportive of an environment was, was possible. Was the project that you ended up with, the one that you started with 22 days before, 
No, and thank God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we didn't, you know, 22 days in, I think we were starting to figure out how to make a movie. <laughs> and, uh, and luckily, other people around us, you know, had to figure that out long before but that. But also, story wise, I mean, the what I watched was so similar, but there are so many story moments, so many character moments that you guys managed to find as you were making it, which is not, I mean, it's not necessarily abnormal, but for a first time director and first time feature makers, this is like something that is magic, you know? Yeah, I think it, you know, the flexibility of everybody on it really just allowed for the, the thing that needed to happen to happen. Yeah. And so what we ended up with was yeah. so much better than what we yeah. thought we were making. It's the beauty of an indie, right? You're <laughs> yeah. able to make those changes and make right. those organic Yeah, I mean, sometimes you can tell when you watch a movie, like, oh, and then they let them go off a little bit. And they can <laughs> tell. No, this is like real story, <laughs> real character moments, themes that are deep, that were mined in the moment that somehow told the story in an even deeper way. Just get to have this great collaborative moment where you can like, it was just great about an indie film. It was like me and Diggs and Jess and Keith and Carlos can just sort of step to the side and go, hey, I think we should change this line to, line to this. And we've all sat with this story for so long that we can see whether or not that connects all the dots that it needs to connect and make a choice in the moment. And so we had a lot of really awesome moments where we're two takes in and we go, you know what? <laughs> now that we're now that we're standing yeah. here, now that we're sitting here, and we feel the energy in the room. You know, this character should respond this way instead, and we would change it, and something completely new would happen. So then we get into the editing room, and we've realized that we did that 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's all these new things to mind for, for, for great moments, and so I'm, I'm so happy that not just what was on the page is what we're seeing now. It's, it's become this amazing, you know, 2.0 version of, of the script mm -hmm. because of all the people on set that were making contributions to it. Although that says a lot about you guys, too, with your tender project mm -hmm. and able to make changes on the fly and willing to make changes on the fly. That's rapper stuff, man. That's yeah. when you, when you <laughs> come from a hip hop background, that's like, you, you know, that's just how it works. If you're working on a song, you don't know that the thing doesn't work until you hear it back in the speakers. Kay. And then as soon as you hear it, you're very aware that that doesn't work, so you change it immediately. And I, I, it's, it's a very hip hop process, the way that this was made. And like, um, I, there, it's funny to me, because I watch it now, and there are pivotal lines in the film that I know we came up with sitting right there <laughs> yeah. after doing it the wrong way three times. And it's just like, well, what like if we mean? hadn't thought of that? What if we hadn't come up with that that yeah. day? <laughs> we wouldn't have been able to tell the story. Awesome. Yeah. Well, just so you know, and maybe you already know this, IndieWire is calling blind spotting one of the 10 most saleable, potentially popular movies to get bought after the okay. movie. Buy that There you go. <laughs> Thank you, you so much. that world? Yeah. Buy it. Bust out your wallet and your credit card. It's time to go. We're not but shy about it. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so excited for your movie. And thank congratulations you. on kicking off the festival. Thank you And I hope much. your families will love it. I'm sure that they will. Thanks for having me. Have a great time. And we'll be right back.